And uh, as the International Space Station flies into an orbital sunset, a good view right now of the Soyuz MS-09 spacecraft that will be the work site for Kononenko and Prokopiev a short time from now. Right at the top, that bulbous section, that is the habitation module, sometimes known as the orbital module, and it is along uh, that series of insignias, uh, the Roscosmos uh, logo, the Russian flag, the RSC Energia insignia, below it is the Cyrillic word Soyuz. It is along uh, the area vertically from the left-hand insignia, which is the insignia of Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, that Kononenko will make a 10-inch cut in the thermal insulation, uh, peel that back, and then uh, cut uh, a piece of debris shield underneath that will expose the hull of the habitation module for his uh, forensic analysis. This is Mission Control uh, three and a, approaching the three-and-a-half-hour mark into the spacewalk. You see Oleg Kononenko at the end of the uh, Strela boom. Uh, he'll be maneuvered just a bit more to the uh, left where you see uh, the Roscosmos insignia just on the left side of the habitation module as we look at it from this perspective. A very good view of the MS-09 vehicle. The center section is the descent module. That is the only section that survives the heat of reentry with the crew strapped into their respective seats in that middle section for a parachute-assisted uh, landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan, as will be the case next Wednesday night, a week from tomorrow night, U.S. time, early in the, uh, in the, in the morning of uh, December 20th in Kazakhstan. At the very end of the Soyuz, uh, that white section, that's the instrumentation and propulsion module where the solar arrays and the engines of the Soyuz are located. But the focus of attention is that top section, the bulbous portion called the orbital module. As uh, the International Space Station flies 250 miles south of Australia, soon uh, to enter an orbital sunrise over the Pacific Ocean, a ghostly view of Oleg Kononenko at the end of the uh, Strela boom. Oleg, smile. So you need to use your cutter to slightly uh, outline the exact place of the cut. Sergey, give me your hand, please. Sergey, and can you please move to uh, closer to Oleg as much as possible? Okay, in work. Honestly, I can't look at that. It's my vehicle, Oleg. All right, so I've made a hole. Copy. What is the objective of this? This is Mission Control Houston at the four hour, ten minute mark in the EVA. Uh, you can see from Oleg Kononenko's helmet camera that area where he used a knife to initiate an incision into the thermal insulation, uh, underneath which is a uh, micrometeoroid orbital debris shield. He, however, has not had much luck uh, getting the correct leverage with his feet in a foot restraint at the end of the Strela boom to be able to uh, utilize uh, a different set of cutters, so he's now back to the knife itself. This, by the way, is deja vu to a certain extent from July 10th, 2008, when Kononenko and Sergei Volkov uh, used cutting tools and knives to uh, Away. Cut away insulation over pyrotechnic bolts, uh, the separation mechanisms for module separation that they inspected on their Soyuz TMA-12 spacecraft. Four hours, 21 minutes into the spacewalk, a great view of Oleg Kononenko in the red stripes, having used uh, a cutting tool to make an incision as he continues uh, now to use a knife to uh, cut away thermal insulation and try to get uh, to uh, the orbital uh, meteoroid debris shield underneath that he hopes to be able to cut uh, to expose the hull of the habitation module of the Soyuz for sample collection 
of any epoxy sealant that may have extruded during the repair of a hole on the inside of the habitation module back on August 29th. Okay, be careful here, okay? Make sure it doesn't touch you. All is well. What did you say? Guys, th this is Moscow. Please take at least two minute break while we will be thinking through our next steps. Well, okay, we almost reached it. And uh, This is Mission Control Houston, five hours, ten minutes into today's spacewalk as uh, Ale Kononenko now begins to use a pair of shears to cut through the uh, debris shield that is underneath all of this insulation, this wide swath of insulation that uh, the crew cut back uh, over the course of the past hour. Like that. I think it's perfect. Yeah. No, nothing. Sure. Let's cut a little bit more. Nothing. We still don't see that hole. We don't see the hole. All right, let's stop right here. The shield, can you just raise it a little bit? Be very careful. Yes. Oh, yes, I can see it. I think that is the hole. That is exactly the hole we've been looking for, guys. No, it's not that one. No, it is that one. This one is serious? Yes, that one. It's the hole. All right, the this is Mission Control Houston at the 5 hour 20 minute mark in the spacewalk, the Eureka moment where uh, the crew uh, finally saw the area, a small black dot that uh, flight controllers and Korolev, Russian flight controllers, say uh, represents the area on the external hull where the hole uh, corresponds uh, to the inside of the habitation module that was detected back on August 29th, causing the pressure decay that was repaired through uh, material uh, soaked in epoxy sealant that was stuffed inside the one-tenth of an inch hole on the inside. The uh, extrusion of some of that material is what you see, what you saw a moment ago anyway, on the uh, hull, on the external hull, uh, now that uh, the crew has uh, cut through the insulation and a portion of the uh, debris shield underneath, peeling all of that back to expose the area that they uh, plan uh, to collect samples from to be put in a special container to be brought back to Earth for analysis by Russian engineers. Five, forty-three. we are uh, moving towards the end of the EVA. 5.43 is uh, the time of the EVA. Yes, uh, pull it away because I want to cut it here. What, 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 what? Yes. And a good unobstructed view now of that black uh, spot. Uh, that's the hole on the external uh, hull of the habitation module that corresponds uh, to the area that the hole was detected inside back on August 29th. Yeah. Oh, I managed to, to grip it. I managed. It's a success. Put the cup on it. Will you be able to grasp this is Mission Control Houston. We're at the six hour mark in the spacewalk. Oleg Kononenko trying mightily to uh, collect a sample of the uh, epoxy sealant that uh, extruded through uh, the hole. Of 
Ну, давайте все с этим закон. Окей, okay, uh, let's finish up with these operations. Окей, okay, let's go. Okay, so uh, I am pulling you towards it. Uh, you are in a good position now. I don't even have to do much at this point. Well, there you go. Did you get used to it? Uh, sure enough. Uh, Sergey, uh, uh, what I have now, there is uh, just a circle type uh, insert here. It looks like a plug. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Let's start wrapping up. Six minutes, six hours, nine minutes into today's spacewalk, uh, Kononenko continues uh, to collect samples of the uh, epoxy sealant. The crew no longer plans to put a uh, insulation blanket over the area of the incision where they uh, cut through thermal insulation and a piece of the micrometeoroid orbital debris shield underneath. Russian specialists at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov outside Moscow have determined uh, through analysis that uh, it is not necessary for the uh, habitation module uh, to be covered with that piece of uh, thermal insulation as the original plan had called for. This uh, habitation module, as we've mentioned before, but it's worth mentioning again, okay, so I've reached the habitation module is uh, depressurized right after uh, the deorbit burn that will occur next Wednesday evening. The crew uh, is inside the center section of the Soyuz vehicle, the descent module strapped into their respective seats. The habitation module is then pyrotechnically jettisoned along with the lower section of the Soyuz, which is the instrumentation and propulsion module right before the vehicle enters the Earth's atmosphere. So the habitation module's work uh, is basically completed after the crew has climbed inside uh, through the habitation module to the descent module and closed the hatches behind them. So again, uh, we're now hearing that uh, the uh, Russian uh, specialists no longer believe that it's required to put a thermal blanket over the area where the incision uh, and the uh, inspection uh, took place by the two cosmonauts. You see in this wider view uh, from an external truss camera, Sergei Prokopiev uh, beginning to set up the uh, Strela telescoping boom once again for uh, Oleg Kononenko to be transported uh, from the work site on the habitation module over to the Zarya module and then back from Zarya to the pier's docking compartment where the crew will re-enter the International Space Station's airlock and uh, close the hatch to complete the spacewalk. One other note, uh, as uh, the two cosmonauts are making their way back towards piers, uh, we'll be hearing uh, that Anne McLean and David St. Jacques will be uh, moving into their Soyuz spacecraft, which is the Soyuz MS-11 spacecraft that docked last week to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station for a period of about one hour of isolation. That uh, is a standard operating procedure for Russian spacewalks to enable uh, the spacewalkers themselves to have a backup airlock capability through the service module if necessary in the unlikely event they would be unable to repressurize the pier's docking compartment for some reason.